this is Ankita here from Education Street and welcome on board to our webinar series Decode Masters and today's series is about Decode Masters in Electrical Engineering. So that's something which we are definitely looking forward to roll and me being today's uh, host, I quickly want to take a minute to uh, let you all know who I am. So personally, even I'm an IT engineer. I studied at Vesit. I did my engineering. I was recruited by Tech Mahindra. I worked as a software engineer. Post that, I gave my GMAT and I went to do my MBA. I wanted to go for a one year MBA. I went to UK. I studied in University of Leeds and I specialized in finance, but I also then without any clarity, but I also did a diploma in counseling while I was studying in UK with UK Council as I felt I'm very good at communicating. And while I was studying and I was applying abroad, I really felt I had the knack to do so, but nothing concrete. I happened to get recruited by British Petroleum in London. Very happy with good salary, good place, and who would not love London? Yeah, and that's how my story was. Very happy and gay out there. However, soon I realized I want to start something of my own, and that urge was too strong enough. And that made me realize I want to start something in education. And in 2010, I left my job, which uh, sounded very scary then, but I did that. I returned back and I came to India and I started Education Street. So it's been 10 years, a decade, wherein I have been supporting, mentoring and guiding students. And let me tell you guys, I think I did the best thing possible. I really, really love doing what I am. And hence, I am here today as a counselor and as a founder of Education Street to impart whatever I can do best to guide you in your journey to study abroad. Apart from that, personally, I'm married to a very wonderful husband. He's an hustling husband. I'm a mother to a three-year-old now, not a two-year, a three-year-old daughter. And that keeps me on my toes always. And I'm fixated with meditation and traveling. I've almost traveled to 28 countries so far. And a lot of universities, a lot of campuses, a lot of study destinations, I have been myself. So this is about me. And I hope I can do my best to give you on the time that you have given us. So coming back, let's talk about today's agenda. For all of you who have joined in today, you will go with a lot of information about what MS in electrical engineering is all about, what kind of subjects, what kind of things you need to be prepared for. That's exactly what I'm going to throw light on your application material. What is required for to go to US, your university selection. So what all you know how to go about how to proceed credit system in US. I think this is enough that you should know now because it's little technical, but very unknown to you. And hence we want to present that as well to you and US education cost and return of investment. We are going to do a simple maths for you to understand if you are a prospective student to US, how and what you can do to return your money on that and the job trends related to electrical engineering as today's topic is all about that. So I hope this is the agenda and I would start with without any delay. So personally, let me tell you, you all know that US is a big daddy when it comes to studying abroad. Definitely, we all know that because it's the highest. I mean, it's a country where highest number of students go, you know, made be bachelors, made be PhDs, made be masters. It's always been a land of opportunity. And when I say that, why not? Right. There have been so many engineers, so many bachelors, so many graduates who have been there in US and have successfully proven themselves. Now, why do anyone chooses US above any other country? Mainly, there are top four reasons to it. Focus is on quality and not on quantity. That means there is a lot of primary focus subjects which are there available in your masters. They don't want you to do across the uh, array all the kind of concepts. No, if you're going for electrical engineering, you typically might study like 12 to 15 subjects only in two years, but they would be in depth they would be advanced and that's exactly what they want to make you a master. They don't want to make you a jack of all trades and that's how the focus is. Second, top tech companies invest in your education. That means we all hear that the education in US is very practical. Why is it so? Because 
the labs the research of top tech companies happen in these us universities and hence they are very focused on skills they're very focused on practices they're very focused on projects so that's how the beauty of the program and that's why masters is such a loved program by students you may feel i'm academically not very strong here will i be able to do it well there definitely i would say because all the students love this approach of education so you should definitely look for a masters in us third opportunities to gain experience and pocket money because part time education part time jobs are available and a salary and a career success is a story and the reward that we all want silicon valley may be any top tech companies and you must have seen that indians have proven their legacy out there in us all the top tech companies are seeing that there is a huge 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 performance by indian students and saying that it is always a very good magnet to go to us for you because employers don't doubt indian students they know they are hard working they know they are innovative they know they have the knack for technology and hence electrical engineers electronic engineers you need not worry to go to us The fourth thing is choose your own subjects. Now this freedom is something which is like a new found love because we all never have got an opportunity to go by and choose our own curriculum. In US it's a reality. We follow our curriculum so rigorous it's so rigid that we cannot pick and choose or leave what we don't like and in a way we do not perform. Don't you think that's the story here? So a lot of times we don't like some subjects, but we can't miss that out, or we can't remove it from our curriculum because it's rigid. However, when you go to US, there are only few core subjects. So suppose if you have twelve subjects to study, there may be only three core subjects. Rest all subjects are of your choice. So majority, that is eighty percent of your program, are for the programs and the subjects that you are going to choose. and that's why i say it's a beautiful curriculum and ms in us is definitely a choice to make it moving further choosing your major that's why we are here right so if we are from electrical engineering or electronic engineering so far by far in india we have electronic engineering so don't confuse yourself with electrical and electronic that's how they work that's how they have a bigger picture that is electrical engineering because i will share with you what all they have in it so in this case choosing your major i would say personally you start with your personal goal you have to identify yourself what you're good at if you're good at electrical engineering or electronics right now you have to dig deeper into it are you good to do this for next 5 years i'm not talking about lifetime no one does one thing for lifetime i am a living example of this so don't worry about lifetime things will fall in place but think about the next 5 years are you okay doing the same thing and into electronic and electrical if the answer is yes yes you are you are on the right track do not follow what is trending oh my senior said ki there are a lot of jobs in computer science let me leave electrical and let me go to computer science guys are you good at it are you aware of programming languages are you aware of operating systems are you looking forward to change and if yes and you want to put your efforts into that direction it's okay to go into computer science but if you are not sure and if you have never explored and if you have explored and you have not liked it please don't go according to what is trending go on what you like and go on what you can you know um excel in and choose and you know go and choose and explore your topic so now today what you're doing is exploring so i have an idea i have an hint i may like to go for electrical engineering now that's exactly what we want you to be sure of saying this now you can consider to go into electrical engineering but you need to do your research that is what is very important and that's what i'm asking every student to pay attention to this webinar because if i'm going to share you may get an answer in itself okay so in us there are two types of masters masters in science which is ms with thesis masters in engineering or professional m engineering that is without thesis so all the students who are going for us these are the two masters choices if i am someone who wants to go for an ms yes that's really nice ms is a four uh, a two year degree with a four semesters 
any masters is four semesters all four semesters in this three semesters are taught programs the fourth semester is a project or a thesis that you do so it's a project that you conduct for yourself or a thesis and a research that you carry if i am someone who feels like okay i don't want to go a thesis i'm not looking forward to go for a phd later on i may also offer m engineering or a masters in professional in electrical engineering in that case all my four semesters or three semesters whatever is the duration of the course you will have to study only taught programs so this is how the two masters differ so a lot of students have a myth that m engineering students will not have necessary jobs that's wrong that's really not right if that would be the case the universities would not offer that to you understand what you require don't go behind jobs first understand what you require i am someone who is very clear i want to do an ms with thesis apply for an ms program you may or may not do a phd but i want to have a fourth semester where i get to explore my concept say i am from electrical but i want to explore say artificial intelligence or nanotechnology now in that case i have my fourth semester to work upon that so that's the beauty of ms in thesis but i am someone who don't want to explore i'm very sure i want to go for professional skill program very practical program i go for engineering so this is how the difference happen however let me tell you one point here m engineering is lesser competitive as compared to ms in th with thesis because as the myth plays to a lot of people people think you don't get jobs after ms and that is the reason people don't apply for m engineering or even if they are offered they don't go. that makes you miss upon good universities same department only thesis was minus but that's how we play about so this is how two masters are there now i'm going to talk about what are the concepts syllabus in masters in electrical engineering so there are two concepts in your syllabus core subjects and electives so whenever you go for any university you may see or you may read that there are core subjects and electives now what are core subjects and what are electives so basically core subjects are the ones which are mandatory as i said it's only 20% of your syllabus that means only two or three subjects would be core rest all would all be electives so you're absolutely tailoring your course on yourself and that's how beautiful the program comes because the freedom something which we don't have here makes you feel very rich and that's exactly how students progress and bloom when they are in us so let's talk about the core subjects okay so now the core subjects in ms in electrical engineering are differs and there are a lot of them but these are the main ones electric power systems computer architecture networking software engineering object oriented programming in java microelectronics wireless communication circuit vlsi design advanced computer networks discrete mathematics and semiconductors so these would be few of the core subjects okay now the core subjects depend from university to university hence i cannot say which three or which four are the most popular ones okay but these are the core subjects which where you start with now you may have a lot of questions about what do i do if i'm not aware of them or how do i prepare with them i'm going to impart that information as well just wait for a moment and i'm going to get you through the entire process now in us you are allowed to tailor your course that is why they are called as electives ample of electives trust me on this this is a major confusion point for students because they really are not aware which one to pick now the i would say that is a battle that we'll fight later but there are enough courses which you can pick up to make your masters a specialized masters so say i want to make my career further into ai or i want to make my career into embedded systems i choose subjects and electives related to this so when i am going to choose an ms in electrical engineer what i need to do is that when i am looking at the curriculum of respective x y z university i go through the core subjects and the electives thoroughly because if i am someone who wants to take my career into say nanotechnology and there are no options in nanotechnology 
there is no point applying to that university am i right you may have a lot of electives but nothing in nanotechnology or nothing in telecommunication so in this case i have to refrain from applying to such wrong universities so this is how you need to plan and apply to universities so what are the electives enough for you to be spoiled with okay so embedded systems vlsi design ai artificial intelligence power and renewable systems networking robotics biomedical systems nanotechnology telecommunication iot internet of things systems and security enough am i right so all the people who are there in the group please say a yes a bingo is it going right can you let me know you are all alive can you use the chat function to let me know about that a yes a thumbs up would really really feel very appreciating and motivating for me to carry further so please do that and do not forget you need to take a snapshot in between tag us at education street and you would definitely get a surprise thank you kritika thank you alap thank you vaishali piyush yeah this feels alive thank you so much guys okay so let's move further now as we have seen what are the specializations how you can you know create your own masters let me pull you up for you know be ready for what are the application material when you are applying for us so i have decided i want to go for ms in electrical engineering i have checked their website i have checked that the university has these is electives these core subjects i have figured out okay these are the universities which really fit my bill so in this case what are the application material that we need to start in for so first of all the application cycle to apply for any intake starts a year prior so anyone who's looking for september 22 you need to apply a year prior that means this september october 21 that early the applications have to be submitted and to that extent that you need to start the process 3 to 4 months prior to september october 21 because it takes time why does it take time look at the list of documents that we need to prepare there's gre so all the students who are looking to go to us next year you have time please go for a gre exam i know for jan 22 there are still a lot of universities which have given gre waiver but i'm not sure what will happen for fall 22 so if you're for jan 22 yes there are good 30 40% of the universities which still have gre waiver due to covid but when it comes to fall we are still waiting it i feel it may not come as much as they are there now and why not to take up an gre when you have chances to get better scholarship you have chances to you know crack a good school so i definitely would give you a heads up that you should take up a gre a tofl or an ilts either of the exams are widely acceptable to go and study in us transcripts we need to apply from your college statement of purpose that is an essay about you so we do have editing services for all these things letter of recommendations we require 3 we require a cv if you have extra curriculars we also pull out that in our essays and at the end we require financial documents all these things take time because a lot of things we are dependent on others like we are dependent on our recommenders to sign and give us the letter of recommendations our transcripts is from college so all these things are very time consuming and hence applying as soon as possible and starting the process is very very important at education street we pay a lot of uh you know efforts and steps behind to get you really really a good university now let's talk about when you're applying to us what does the university require so i may decide i want to go to say uc berkeley but what is uc berkeley looking at so none of the websites which clearly tell you that okay we want eight pointers you want gre 325 unfortunately us doesn't play that way and guys the research takes a lot of time US has almost 4000 plus university now let me tell you that's a huge amount of universities but we need to see what fits our criteria so the universities work mainly on academics so when it comes to your semesters they look at all semesters right from your first semester probably till sixth only because you may be applying while you're studying so only six semester results or transcripts go to them or seventh 
or if you have finished your working then all semester transcripts so all semesters are very very important you may have some mishaps there you may have some backlogs there we can work out something but your second opportunity for students who do not hold a good cgpa or percentage or aggregate would be a gre and toefl score so that's how the universities are judging you so your second breather or a second opportunity is a gre and then a little of it of your extracurriculars and projects and internship so two things the top notch things which is 80% of what the universities look at is your sterling academics and your gre and toefl score so if you ask me and you ask me questions like you know is it okay that you know i have a lot of extracurriculars but i'm not good at academics we understand this but a university understands academic excellence only so unfortunately if you have not performed well in your aggregate it's okay let's find out a second solution your second solution could be to take up gre you perform gre but your perform is also performance at gre is also average it's okay let us play by the experience that we have at education street to see that what all universities have been looking at students and giving them equally good opportunity good departments good teaching experience so don't fall for any university there are a lot of counselors lot of people who are playing the card of free application fee free admission free uh, you know uh university counseling and they're not taking any money from you that's because they don't want money from you they don't want your 30 40 000 rupees what they want is they want money which are is going to be much more higher from the university by recruiting so they act as recruiters to you what they do is they just want to apply you to some university where they will definitely take you because that's what comes free so please guys i have also a purpose to help all of you here please do not fall for free because as indians we are always too sensitive to cost and whatever helps us to save cost we fall for it but when you're going as a very important step to go to a university go from your comfort zone go to a newer area how can you compromise on this step few thousands that you save here is going to compromise and cost you a few a lot of lakhs over there so it's very important what kind of university you are selecting at education street our major goal is clean counseling we are not free counselors we are not recruiters of university we just don't want to give you any university we do take care of each student as a personal student and we research we give you answers we help you to apply to the best possible university for your profile so this is how you need to choose the right people to help and mentor you there are so many dementing stories that okay the counselor took this that and you know they went and to a very uh, ill graded university because you did not pay attention you were behind saving your application fees which was fee waived and then you fell into that trap so it was your mistake i am saving you from that mistake please don't do that okay now how many number of universities shall we apply to so around 5 to 9 universities are more than enough to apply to us if they are well researched if they are really potential and well explored otherwise how many you apply it's still a questionable okay so we typically at education street help students to apply for 5 to 9 universities and we are typically very proud that we have at least 2 to 3 admits from universities for you application fee ranges from $50 to $100 so assuming that $75 is per university and we apply for seven university it's around $525 that means $37000 rupees in indian rupees is what is required to apply for us for seven universities so guys i am giving you all this maths so that you are well prepared your parents are well prepared to understand what it takes to apply to us now what happens here is a lot of counselors will try to give you free counseling will tell you all seven universities there is an application fee waiver they will do is what they will do is they will pull out universities which want to attract students and hence they are giving fee waivers and that's what happens even we have fee waivers even we have lot of universities where we are tied up with but 
our approach is not to recruit you to for them our approach is that we will apply to wherever whatever tie up non tie up we are not looking at that area we are looking at applying to good university and i would be the first person to tell you please don't go below this if you are going below this i would say you are better to stay here and that's how we approach our application and our students so this is how the application process in us goes now let me explain you how does us has class hours and what is the daily schedule so generally students take three courses per semester so in that case each course has around one and a half hours lecture weekly so that makes four and a half hours for classes per week may vary according to university so typically you have around five hours classes per week does that mean that you have enough time to while and entertain yourself i'm sorry by reading before point if you think that you are free for a week to enjoy then you are absolutely wrong okay because loads of assignments and are assigned to students which needs to be complete within deadlines as this assignment counts for your gpa and yeah you cannot copy because there's a lot of check and plagiarism if you are caught by the software and you have copied it you will be suspended so in this case it is very 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 important that you do and pay a lot of attention there is no spoon feeding guys from the professors how indian students you are very sure and you are very uh, you know used to you know taking last minute xeroxes you are very used to copying up the assignments you are very used to you know having the most important questions and then you know the second best and you know all these things it's not going to happen there all what you need to do is you need to apply your understanding to that question so most of them there's no right and wrong answer there is either practical solving about if it's circuit you need to make a circuit or an ic chip you need to work on that if it's a vlsi design you need to draw up on that and stuff if it's something related to some uh, you know uh, theory then it will be having a case study and you need to answer what you feel about it and there's a lot of things which happen behind and trust me you would definitely enjoy it because that's exactly what students do and that's how the seniors will also tell you now let's come to the credit systems in us so typically you are the master so basically you have to decide everything now this adds a lot of confusion as well because we are not used to this freedom because we are very scared ourselves whether we are making the right choice or not but don't be because that's exactly why we are preparing you right from now that what is that you have to check and what is that you need to decide okay so now a masters require so typically when you go to us there's called as credit systems so in india we have subjects where we either have cgpa and percentage and aggregate is counted however there there is gpa that is out of four okay now every masters you to get a degree to get a degree of masters conferred upon you you need to have credits of around 30 to 40 depending on university so assuming your university requires 30 credits to get you a masters in electrical engineering so why i'm sharing all this with you is because when you go and do your research which even if you join at education street we insist all students to do their own research because that's where the confidence lies okay so in this case when you go you will see that the particular masters is 30 or 36 credit or 40 credits this will make you understand what the terminology is now suppose as i said each semester you may take two or three subjects so in this case if i have to get 30 credits and one subject is equal to three or four credits it depends but typically three is the uh, norm okay so when it comes to three four is only when you know the subject is really advanced okay but assuming for this example your three credits so one subjects get you three credit that means if i have to do a masters for 30 credit i have to study 10 subjects 10 subjects will give me 30 credits that will get me a ms in electrical engineering from that university this is relate this is nothing related to your performance my performance is accounted by gpa which is out of 4 so now what i do in this 10 subjects maybe i do a pass class or i do really nice excellent or distinction that is my gpa so one is that i do my 10 subjects i get my degree one is 
I get my degree, but with what GPA? That means what excellence I have achieved. So these are two different things. That's what we need to understand. For us in India, it is always that I, if I've cleared, it is always performance or it is always you know percentage and CGPA. Here I have to take ten subjects. Now these ten subjects I can take up in three semesters or I can do it in four semesters. That the choice is mine. So one semester I can take only two subjects. That is my choice as well. So this is how credit systems in US work. Masters require thirty to forty credits. Each subject gets you around two to four. That is the range. GPA is outcome of your performance. Tuition fee is an outcome of your number of credits. So now, if the program is thirty credit, you will see the tuition fee in US based on credit system. So the 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 websites would have one credit is equal to say twelve hundred dollars. So I have to multiply twelve hundred into thirty. That is what my fees is going to be when I'm paying for my masters. So this is how the credit systems work in US. So typically a master you study twelve to fifteen subjects and thirty to forty credits in between, depending from university to university, is your master credit system. I hope this. Technical and complicated subject. I'm able to impart that to you. Can all of us or few of you can just give me a yes and a thumbs up that did you understand this concept? Because it's very important for you to understand if you're looking out to go for any MS in US, and it's very very important for you to understand this. Now for the students who are going abroad and who are planning to go abroad and for MS in electrical, I just have few suggestions about what you can do before going to MS in electrical engineering. First of all, do invest your time for mathematics and calculus. That's really Really, really going to help you out. Also, probability and design and analysis because that's exactly where a lot of things come in picture when you go for an MS program. And if you can learn any computer programming, probably Java or C plus plus, you know, or Python because that's really, really trending out. So these are the few things which I would say. And I would also suggest few softwares which you can start exploring because a lot of your project work would be done from these. Softwares, probably, yeah. Okay, so could be MATLAB. Uh, you can take a snapshot of this as well. That it might help you out. Okay, so MATLAB software for numerical computing, simulating. It's for you know GUI based software for dynamic system stimulation. P Spice, Multism, ETAP, Powerwall Stimulator, PSSS, LabView. These are a lot of softwares. You don't have to do all of them. You can choose. I have also given a description about where they are used. So probably if you're going for power systems example, so ETAP could be a software you can use because a specialization in power systems in MS in electrical engineer is definitely going to help you out. So these are few softwares which you can learn beforehand because then it will help you to. Do your projects or your assignments and a lot of things because they are really really helpful when you go for your masters in US and typically for electrical engineering. Okay, so this is how you can do about. Now let's come to cost of education. We are all worried about that because why not? We have the money or we don't have. It's a huge money to go to US. So typically the cost of education ranges from twelve to eighteen lakh rupees a year. There could be some higher as well. But yes, the ranking, the the fees range because of the rankings of the university, the private or state or private universities. So higher the university ranked, higher the fees. If it's a uh, so and secondly, the US has a concept of private, uh, public and uh, private universities. So the state universities are always twenty percent lesser than private. So if I'm cost sensitive, I want to play economical. Always apply to state universities. So all California state universities, Ohio state universities, Oregon state universities, all of these state universities are something which you can definitely look forward because their fees may be twenty percent lesser than what you would spend for a private bit. So that's how you play your card. So guys, there's a lot to understand. Yes, US is expensive, but there are avenues to save your money. It is not coming to you because you have not gone to the right people. You have not gone to a right counselor. You then you decide that I can do everything. Then there are hundred forums. There are ten hundred forums. There are ten thousand people. There are ten thousand people. I waste my ten thousand days just reading their comments because every second there is a, a information given. But it's just a. Information is it an authentic information? No one knows. So you pick some, you lose some. So even if there is a false information, you believe it and you take your decisions accordingly. 
is that a right way to go in when you're going to spend lakhs of rupees just imagine 12 to 18 lakh rupees a year into two but what are you worried about paying your counselor your money why because you think you can save that money but you're not realizing the money that you're going to spend abroad is much more higher a counselor can save you on the right university selection. A counselor can help you to save your university by applying to right university. Now, these money, because it is not quantified, you are not able to understand. I know there are a lot of counselors who take money and does not fulfill your bid. But understand the efforts. Look at the efforts. Look at the understanding. Look at their reviews. Look at the... Uh, give them a chance talk to them that's exactly where you would realize is that person sound enough to support me you fall in wrong place because you go for free you go for something which is cheaper guys it cannot happen nothing comes easy now, i am doing this because i have 10 years of experience do you think i can do something wrong to you i cannot do something wrong to you because i cannot sleep i do this with utmost passion so choosing your university is a very very important step if that is not done right, you're not going to go to a right place and you're not going to save the money and you're not going to career your progress in your career rightly. So it's very important that how you spend your money. OK, now let's come to living expenses. So every state has different, different fees. OK, and every university state wise would have different living expenses. But typically it's seven to nine lakh rupees a year. In that case, of course, New York, Boston, California, San Francisco are going to be the higher belt because they are cities, you know, like Mumbai, Delhi. These are cities. There's going to be higher living cost. But the same place, Nagpur, Nasik, Bhopal, they would be still very good universities, but lesser amount of cost. So that's exactly how you save money. If you come to me and you tell me this is my budget, I have to play around your budget. I have to fulfill your budget. I don't have to tell you shoo away and tell you, no, this is not possible. No, it's possible. It's possible for every student. OK, so seven lakh to nine lakh rupees. Your rent is going to be around three hundred, four hundred dollars a month. So if you want to save your money, you have to share your accommodation. Don't go for a very luxurious apartment. So all the students, these are the ways how you save your money. Groceries is hundred dollar. Don't save your please live your life well enough. Utility bills is hundred and ad hoc ancillary cost is hundred dollars. OK, so this is how you spend your money. This is how around 700 to 1000 dollar per month so 45000 to 60000 rupees per month is what the expenditure is required a bank loan gives you an entire living cost and tuition cost so even a bank loan is available to you an educational loan is available to you provided you start right provided you have time to apply for loan so all these things is all dependent on how you start start how structured you are and when you start your process so as we say us is a land of opportunity but it is a lot of work before you go to us so you need to start your game early okay guys now how to remove your cost as i said we all want to know that how we can reduce our cost am i right so in this case every student is allowed to work 20 hours a week the first year you are allowed to work only on campus that means not everybody will get the job the second year you're allowed to work on campus and off campus both that means all of you have the opportunity so typically you start early once you get an admission once you're in your first semester the same time you start so probably most of the students may not get in the first semester but your chances to get from second semester and remove your living cost is very very high provided you start your efforts now, what happens is student thinks I am a good student and performing well and I will get the job. No, it's not going to happen. Guys, jobs in India or anywhere or everywhere, it doesn't come if you don't put your efforts. You need to apply for 50 jobs and then you'll get one. And that's how you have to put in efforts. Studying abroad is all about going out of your comfort zone and exploring and then the rewards come. That's exactly what lakhs of students who are in us have done they have put in the efforts and that's exactly what you have to do so now let us do again a simple maths for you to explain to your parents so ten dollars say assuming you get earned 20 hours a week 200 dollars per month it would be 800 dollars per year it would be around nine thousand six hundred dollars now that's approximately seven lakhs so this is how you will not be taking this money from your parents so say assuming 
that your living cost was around 9 lakh rupees or 8 lakh rupees at least guys can you be confident that you will be able to remove around four and a half or five of your own that's the beauty of going to us that you are allowed to work part time and you can remove the money which looks a lot now but with your efforts it get reduces okay so this is how it is now i'm going to do again one more maths for you because we all want to know that whatever loan we are taking from parents or we are taking money from our parents when will we return this right it's very important so in this case us when we go and apply for visa we apply for an f1 visa f1 visa is for 5 years assuming 2 years is your masters program we all get one year opt i'll explain you that later but typically all stem degrees have three year opt so three year opt that means three year i am going to stay in us okay so the investment amount say approximately is fifty thousand dollar that you have done for your entire education your average salary typically which again i'm going to show what an electrical engineer gets so hold on to that bit is around seventy thousand dollars so the tax is 33 percent which some states don't even have or have lesser than this but i've uh counted the highest 33 percent so 23 100 gets minus so my income is around 46 900 my expenses now i'm not living as a student i am now a working professional so my life goes luxurious i give you that as well so two thousand dollar from one thousand dollar i'm jumping to two thousand dollar because i'm house i may have a lifestyle so two thousand dollar so two thousand dollar into twelve so around twenty four thousand dollar is your expense with a very rich life okay savings income minus expenses so twenty two nine hundred dollars per year is what i save so guys please tell your parents do understand yourself in your next two and a half year or three and a half year you're typically going to remove all the debt that you have taken and that's why students figure out to go to US. It's just not because it's some education. It is rewarding, but you have to perform. Performance is the only key. Now let's bring in again that what do an electrical engineer can do? What all are the industries? You have enough opportunities, guys, okay? So whatever investment of industries where you can find jobs, it could be power generation and supply, aerospace, construction, transport, infrastructure, manufacturing it communications media and broadcasting computer hardware and software design healthcare science and technology research these are the varied industries where you can look out even consultants kpmg deloitte all of them also hire electrical engineers to be there to handle clients from that zone sorry <coughs> so these are enough industries which you can target now what are the job roles so what are the kind of job roles or you know you would say the areas so typically it could be related to devices and circuits it could be machine vision and signal processing these are a lot of future scope of jobs so guys you may again take a snapshot of this as well because this is really really important for you to understand that where electrical engineers are progressing so i would not say trending this is the change of times as technology has changed a lot of things are changing for example, we all had ACs and machines working as they were, right? With a proper chip and, you know, on and off button and now. Who had imagined few years back that they will all function with a mobile phone and signals from mobile, which is what? Internet of things. So everything, they say, right from our washing machine to our AC, our curtains, everything is changing. And hence, electrical engineers, you need to change your designs, your VLSI, your embedded systems. You need to understand programming. You need to understand AI. You need to understand Internet of things. And so many things out there. Nanotechnology, wearable technology. So all the Amazon people and stuff you must have seen, they're all wearing now, uh, um, you know, watches which also tracks them real time where they are i mean it sounds quite scary but that's exactly how technology is changing wearable technology you never knew i mean you can track people now so devices machine vision wireless mobile and wearable technology uh, electronics design and programming language computing techniques and optimization algorithms rfid antenna microwaves and smartphones embedded systems and robotics microelectronics nanotechnologies and ic design 
these are really really the future scope of electronic communication engineers so if you are looking out and you think that electrical engineer engineering is done and dusted you know it's the old school and stuff guys look at what i have on my slide it's not old school you have not realized where the industry is moving and hence you feel that you need to go to something else no if you like it be your there's a huge change happening be part of this change and you will be approved and getting a lot of things now coming to the salaries yes there are huge rewards when it comes to salaries designation start from electrical engineer manager electromechanical engineer electromechanical equipment assembler energy engineer engineering chief designer engineering consultant engineering planning manager equipment engineer a lot of them okay typically the salary ranges from $75000 to say $100000 now that's how us is rewarding don't you think so why do you think students are ready to put in so much of amount to go to us they are because they have seen that it's quite rewarding the way of work life is very good there they are very rewarding in it you get a different exposure you get an international exposure you get to be in the superpower country there are so many benefits i would say and why would you not look for to study in ms uh, in us so this is how things are now one more thing which i wanted to explain to all of you is opt very important to students who are going for ms in us opt is optional practical training it's technical but do understand so as i mentioned an f1 visa you have two year course but if you go for a stem program that means electrical engineering is a stem program you get a three year stay back option so first you get 12 months and after that you get 24 months which is called as opt extension you may apply for opt extension once your masters is over or you may apply in between which is called as pre completion opt also called as cpt so in after two semesters i am allowed to do an internship when i am doing an internship if i get an internship which is higher than 2 months or 3 months it's like 6 months or 8 months i can definitely apply for opt and start earning in between of my masters so this is why us is so flexible because everything is possible you do what you want okay so opt is basically 2 years of masters plus 3 years of uh, opt so all the students worried about i am going to take a loan will i be able to return the money or i have to return back even if you think it's your worst nightmare that you don't get an h1 b you have 3 years to return your money and that's exactly what you have every student has a stem student has a 3 year stay back option however h1 b is not as difficult as it sounds when you go as a student it is difficult when you want to go from india so say a tcs engineer who's working and wants to apply for h1 b tcs wants to send him on h1 b for a project or a client in us that is difficult now when trump did that everyone was scared but you didn't realize as a student that's the most beautiful thing that happened to you because now the employers even tcs is going to hire a person for that project from us and that could be you so that's how the beauty of the project is okay so that's how opt works so coming back and summing it up well us is a land of opportunity are you ready to get out of your comfort zone and do your best and put your hard work out there and slog and hustle go for your american dream it's a destination to be it's just not that india is not right no i never demean india it's a wonderful place to be however i would love that each one of you get an opportunity to go out of your common and your comfort zone and that's why studying abroad is important because it allows us to go out of your comfort zone there's no mom dad there's no cooked food there is no clean clothes there are no room maid or you know help drivers and all that stuff everything is on me and that is the beauty which comes out because you are exploring your fears your strengths and you become way too confident and that's why i say that studying abroad is a definite opportunity now at education street i really really appreciate that if you would love to join us for our counseling as i explained earlier i am not a recruiter for you i don't want to give you or promise you free universities and few uh, scholarships and you know fee application fee that's not my job i don't want to do that i'm not an application uh, fee waiver i'm not an clerical job you are wherein i'm just pushing you from one to another no that's not what i am from here i'm here to help you and mentor you for your career i want to help you and decide you and guide you which course to take in for i want to help you to select the right universities for you i want to research and help you in your 
essays your uh, i want you to help uh, i also want you to you know want us to help you for your sops your lor so we have editing services for that we don't ghost write no i'm not a counselor who's going to write it from scratch because it's not going to get your heart and soul and i don't want to do something which is going to cost you more than me so that's exactly what we do we help you to shortlist universities your complete guidance for material your sop editing your lor your transcripts your cv we help you to fill up all the 7 to 8 universities forms we help you for your financial assistance to your parents how to be ready for it loan application loan assistance i20 how to get that your visa form your visa date we take three rounds of mock interviews personally one on one to help you prepare for your d day as well this is our efforts to you and if we want to put that religiously and honestly we have to charge you so we are paid counselors so anyone who wants to look for this you are more than welcome to come at education street because we definitely work hard for you so in this case if you're looking out for support you want a counselor and not a recruiter you are more than welcome to come to us if you're looking to apply for any other country apart from us then yes we are helping for that as well maybe uk australia canada ireland germany we can do multi country as well and guys as you may be leaving i would definitely appreciate and i would say thank you for joining us but one thing that i really want to say is that a message from us that end of education is character we all say that you know after masters i got 100000 dollar fees i got this job i got that but to be honest it is you who you have found it is your character because you have gone outside your comfort zone and you have chiseled yourself and you have made yourself a very very global citizen and that's why i say end of education is not job that these are all quantification which we do it is all about what you find that you have to do and that's exactly what education does to you so go for it and really really go in a right way and do your best So thank you guys for your time and investment, and uh, do follow us on our Instagram. If you want to write personally to me, Ankita at Education Street dot in is our web uh, is my email ID. This is the contact number. This is the website, and all our Instagram and handles are at Education Street. Uh, so uh, questions is what I would take in. But once again, thank you so much, guys, for so much of your time, and I hope it made. every minute was worth it so i would love before you leave if you can just give me your feedback because that's a very little that i can ask you for a session which we just had with you